All right, well, we have about three o'clock here, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everybody to the NJCA Ford webinar series. I'm Brian Luckett. I'm the Chief External Affairs and Development Officer with the NJCA National Office. And uh, the National Office really wanted to start this webinar series to really allow our association staff and our members to be able to come together, to collaborate, to be able to share thoughts during this unprecedented time with COVID-19. Uh, from the NJCA Forward campaign, uh, we're focusing on the pillars of strong, focused, and together. And you'll see that as themes as we go through each week of the different topics that we have and the sessions to cover. Um, so there'll be six sessions in total for the NJCA Forward webinar series, one each week. We'll be skipping next week, though, due to the NJCA Sport Committees that will be taking place uh, since we didn't have an NJCA convention this year for those meetings to happen. Uh, today's session is moving forward best practices as an athletic director during COVID-19. We have a great group of panelists today. Uh, we have Brian Rowan, uh, the Executive Director for Athletics at Rowan College, and we also have Jake Ripple, who's Athletic Director at Dodge City Community College. And we're also joined today by some great partners of the NJCA and E-Team Sponsor and Huddle. Uh, so we'll have a presentation by each of them, and then at the end, we'll actually open it up to Q&A. Uh, so from Zoom here, there's a chat feature. If you have a question, uh, whether it's for the entire group, for one of the presenters, or for any of the sponsors, feel free to put your question there in the chat. And then at the end, we'll be able to answer questions and have some dialogue as well. Uh, so our first presenter today is Brian Rowan, as I mentioned. He's the Executive Director for Athletics at Rowan College. Um, he started his role there as AD in July of 2016. Uh, during his time there, uh, they won the 2017-18 Natica Cup which is a winner for success uh, in championship competitions across all sports. Uh, and during his time there, he's led initiatives to increase their website and streaming presence, in addition to the branding and overall reach of the athletic department. Uh, during his time as assistant AD at Rowan College before he assumed the role as athletic director, uh, he was part of a department that won 14 NJCA Division III national championships and four Natica Cups including the Learfield Sports Directors Cup in 2013. Uh, Brian was also the head women's tennis coach there at Rowan College and won national championships in 2012 and in 2013. So we're appreciative for Brian joining us. And uh, Brian, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Brian, for that introduction. Uh, I hope that... Uh, Everybody back home is doing well. I hope everybody is safe and healthy where you are. Uh, I wanna give some updates today and know, of course, that uh, uh, nothing is one size fits all. What we're gonna talk about uh, today are some of the things that we're doing at Rowan College, South Jersey, Gloucester, uh, and hopefully you learn some things and can pick up on a couple things. Um, and my goal, you know, is to also hopefully give a positive outlook to everybody. I think we're all in this together. We all certainly share common goals, you know, to help our student athletes meet their goals to achieve success, uh, both in the classroom and on the, on the playing fields and courts. And uh, hopefully everybody comes out of this stronger and a little bit better. Wanted to give just a little bit of background today before I go into some of the things we're gonna talk about. Uh, one of our, our goals is to bring the community college, community all together in the NJCAA. We're all in different parts of the country. Uh, we're located in Southern New Jersey. Uh, and you know, one of the things, if you watch on the news, you'll pick up on what's going on in the Northeast. Uh, we've been really hard hit by this epidemic. Uh, just today, great state of New Jersey hit a, a milestone, unfortunate milestone, 75,000 total confirmed cases uh, in New Jersey. Now we're in the southern part of the state. Uh, we haven't been hit quite as hard as our neighbors to the north um, and particularly our New York friends that are up there, but uh, it, it's definitely having an impact on us beyond just athletics. I would say at this point, even in South Jersey where we are, most of us are maybe one degree, maybe two degrees of separation from knowing somebody who's sick, uh, you know, or worse. Uh, one, of, one of the folks that a lot of us knew in athletics in South Jersey, a uh, very well-known high school basketball referee passed away last week. That hit home for a lot of us. 
um, here and, and really impacted a lot of us in the South Jersey sports community. Uh, so, so there's not much degree of separation. I know in North Jersey, it's worse. Uh, so, so that's, it's had a major impact. Our campus even today and many of the campuses in New Jersey are being used as drive-through testing sites. Uh, our second campus, the Cumberland campus is in use as a drive-through testing site. Uh, you know, so there's a, there's a major impact. We're deeply involved uh, in it. And uh, really some of our students and former students are on the front lines. We even have an assistant volleyball coach that's involved in drive-through testing as part of her full-time job. Um, I don't wanna overstate the case, of course. I'm coming to you today uh, from the Rowan family uh, household. We've got some good things going on. We've been quarantined now for a month, uh, but there's a lot of positives in this too that, that, that I wanna hit on, uh, sometimes on the family side, some on the professional development side. I think hopefully everybody uh, is feeling some of that as well. Uh, our last contest on campus was March 12th, um, you know, and, and that was difficult baseball game, played Camden County College. It'll be one of those things everybody remembers right after the game. We've got to break down to the student athletes, you know, that the season is over. Uh, and then you work through the other sports and, and to let them know one of the most difficult things many of us will have done as, as, as a athletic administrators is to break that news. Uh, for us, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that right away we provide a lot of support for the student athletes. We knew it was gonna be really difficult for them. So the immediate transition was to move most of our full-time staff members into student support type roles. Uh, a typical spring, you know, for us in April where we are right now is game day management, game supervision, schedule, reschedule, travel, uh, pay officials, taking care of those game day things. We're really busy uh, with all, we have 16 sports, baseball and softball play, track and field, men's tennis in the spring, golf. So the spring is really a busy time and we're used to going all the way through the end of May at the very least uh, with some of the success we've had with our spring team. So it's really a busy time. That transition to student support uh, was critical and I'm really thankful to our staff that have jumped on board uh, to do those things, e even through our athletic trainer, Elise Spalding, who's helped reaching out to students uh, and, and doing a lot on, the, on that side. So that transition, you know, has been important for us to get everybody on board and willing to do that and willing to take time uh, to do that from home and, and obviously get that technology squared away too. Uh, so that was our first transition. One of the things I did early on, and I hope everybody has probably done, uh, sent a letter to all of our student athletes, just giving them the, the breakdown on exactly what's happening and what support measures uh, are available to them from the athletic department and from the college. Uh, I recently did a follow-up video on that uh, with Gus Ostrom, our sports information person, where we uh, you know, did a question and answer session. And each time we sort of put something out so I'd suggest, you know, put out as often as you can some things on, on what support's available. Each time we do, we get some feedback. Uh, it may be a student that reaches out, says, hey, my mom watched the video. That's okay. Whatever it takes to get the student to reach out so you can help them uh, with whatever issue they may be having, uh, I figure is a, is a quality thing. Uh, you know, we've reached out then through breaking our teams down. We have have 192 student athletes in our 16 sport program that we're monitoring. And uh, we broke down that group among our full-time staff members Been reaching out by email, phone, text, kind of whatever it takes to uh, get in touch with the student athletes. And, and we've had various levels of success with that, uh, but it's an ongoing process that, uh, you know, we feel is really important. At our level, we're the non-scholarship division three. We don't have any full-time coaches. Uh, we do have, you know, some coaches that work full-time on campus, but they have other positions. Uh, so then we have most of our, the majority of our coaches have truly part-time people uh, that have other jobs and, and it's our staff that's filling in the gaps. So the coaches, and I know uh, Jake is going to touch on this later, uh, a lot about what his coaching staff is doing. I'm just touching, touching to touch on that briefly. But the coaches uh, are the front line. They're in touch with the students, but they may or may not 
have access to all those people on campus that can help the EOF office, financial aid office, that uh, we can help connect them with. So that's where our staff, our full-time folks are, are filling in the gaps. Uh, one thing that we're trying to do also on that outreach side, we put together a, a page on our website, a dedicated page, static page that is uh, available, that has all the resource links and also a survey that students can fill out if they want somebody to reach out to them. I think it's an underrated thing. I don't, I don't know how many people on, on, uh, around the country have that. I would suggest it. Put, put a page on your website, just has your resources, has your contact info. Maybe there's a survey like we have. Uh, it's, it's leading to some outreach uh, from our students. We're getting one or two a day questions that come through that. Uh, I think that's a success. Not every student uh, wants to ask their question through their coach or wants to call on the phone. So it's, a, it's an extra resource and it's been helpful and I, and I suggest it. The NJCAA site is something I've used a lot just to go to their COVID-19 page for uh, FAQs. So a, a similar model that we're using you know, on our page. Uh, the next, next point here, uh, don't wanna get too far ahead there, Mackenzie, I was still on that past slide. Um, you know, a couple of points on data that we're collecting, and we're going to go through just a couple of the things that we are, uh, that we're tracking. Three areas we're really looking at for success, uh, retention through the rest of the semester. Our college is, has not done pass-fail. Uh, we have extended our withdrawal deadline all the way to the end of this month. So we're trying our very best to avoid those withdrawals. Uh, we're tracking that on a daily basis. So we, want, we had 192 full-time student athletes to begin the semester. Uh, we know we're at 188 right now. Uh, and we wanna keep it at a really high level throughout the semester. Now there may be a situation where a withdrawal is the best thing academically for a student. Uh, we'll walk them through that. And uh, that's something we'd wanna work on together. The next point is uh, registration. So we're working really hard to get all of our returning student athletes registered uh, for the fall, I think if we can do that, it shows really good success. Uh, and the third point we're going to track as soon as possible is the GPA. We want to match up and see how our GPA did compared to last semester, compared to uh, previous years in the spring, uh, to see how it matches up. And we haven't necessarily uh, been asked for those numbers. Those are things we're tracking as a department, uh, but we want to be able to document and answer some questions if they come our way. And I always think that's something that, that you can do uh, and, you know, and have that. Just yesterday morning, I got a question from our retention specialist on campus. They wanted to know what efforts we were making and I was able to give a pretty robust answer, I think, and felt good about that. Uh, what we're doing documentation wise is uh, twice a day, our full-time staff are filling in a little Excel spreadsheet just with some of the things they've done. And I was able to look back at that we can see what other staff members are doing. It's a shared document. And then if we're ever asked for it, hey, it's there. And uh, you know, I know that's not an idea I came up with. A lot of this is sharing ideas. Uh, and Sean Noel helped me with that at Union County. We've all been in touch on things like this. And I hope that people pick up something from a talk like today. Uh, just one term I wanted to put out there is search and rescue. Something our college has used and maybe people around the country uh, are using that. You know, we're trying to find those students who are just not responding, not getting back to an email, not getting back to a phone call. Uh, we're in that mode where maybe we can still salvage them at the very least. Uh, can we salvage some of their courses and get them a W and something else and make sure that they're registered for the fall and have a plan moving forward. So just that concept of search and rescue you know, if you're not using it, I think it's a, you know, a powerful, just urgent message. Find everybody that you can, whether the coach can do it, whether a teammate can do it, whoever's got the best relationship with them on your staff to try and reach out to them. Uh, we've reached out through instructors. We have a group of students that are kind of our most high risk uh, students that had early alerts. And uh, one of our assistant athletic directors, George Hoppins, is doing a really nice job reaching out to our, stu our instructors of those students to try to get that feedback if we're not able to get it directly uh, from the student. We, we had an academic progress report system that worked well, but obviously in this model, 
a uh, lot has changed on that. So those are some of the things that we're doing uh, athletics wise in that transition and uh, in the student athlete support measures. One of the other areas I wanted to talk about uh, today and hopefully best practice wise is keeping that message out there through your social media uh, and website. I think that's you know, just a really positive thing. The NJCAA did a great job with the hashtag NJCAA forward. The message is positive. The message is really clear. And, uh, you know, we've jumped on board with it. Uh, we're, we've been, been doing profiles of our student athletes that people really seem to like. Anytime you can get your student athletes out there, there's no games to report on, but the profiles people have really liked. The students like to see their pictures out there. We've jumped in and done some profiles on alumni. Uh, right now, we've spotlighted some people that have been, uh, are now teachers and coaches, you know, and uh, maybe we can get some of their student athletes to come our way. Uh, they're connected in their high school area, so it could help us with recruiting. Uh, and they're role models in the community. So it shows good outcomes. So if you come to Rowan College, you get that teaching degree or start that teaching degree, become a coach. I think that's really positive. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, we're in the process of highlighting some former uh, student athletes that are healthcare workers uh, and first responders. I think that's something that when, when we did the first one, the student athlete we spotted later reached out, said it meant a lot to her. And uh, those people are on the front lines every day. We have to really appreciate what they're doing. So we're doing that. I think I've seen around the country and, and we're getting ready to go next week to spotlight our coaches. Uh, they're the folks that are, you know, the CEOs of their programs. We want to help them any recruiting wise. So we're going to put a spotlight on our coaches starting next week uh, just to kind of reintroduce all of them, spotlight some of the great things they've done uh, and who's on our coaching staffs uh, across the way, you know, across the board with all our programs. Uh, community service is a great thing to highlight right now. Even if you go back to something that happened in the winter, something one of your teams did in the fall. Uh, we were, you know, spotlighted recently in the newspaper. Our softball team did a great community service effort, and uh, our coach got a call from the governor's office about it, the New Jersey governor's office. I thought that was great. Uh, so community service are great things to highlight. And just last thing I'll mention, you know, I've seen a lot of great ideas out there around the country. Um, we're going to roll out next week some of our all-decade teams. If you didn't get a chance to do that yet, that's something to get your coaches involved, get the alumni involved, keeps you out there in a positive way. Uh, we're working on our winter sports dinner. That's something that got canceled on us. Uh, so what we're gonna do is have our coaches and myself record our speeches, put them together with some highlights and then uh, premiere it one night and have a watch party with the student athletes so that they can get involved. I think that's a good thing. And there's so many challenges out there. If you can get involved in any of those challenges that are out there I just jump on board and, and have some fun with it to show 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 your students in a positive way show your coaches and a staff in a positive way maybe when we're done if there's questions we can hit on some more of those uh, last just just in closing and I want to I know there's a great group of uh, people that are going to talk today uh, I just wanted to hopefully give a positive message and maybe these things help that we went over today feel free to reach out to me by email or ask questions. I'll stick around for that. I think I share everybody's belief that, you know, we're thankful to have the opportunity that we have to work with students on a daily basis. We're blessed to have the jobs we do, to have jobs in this time that's not just a health emergency, but an economic emergency that's hurt so many people. Uh, you know, I'm happy to be healthy and have the opportunity to spend time with my family here at home. It's been interesting and different. But uh, I think a lot of people are learning things about their family, and, and that's been a positive in that time. So I hope everybody's getting some positive, improving yourselves through professional development. And uh, stay tuned for the great rest of the show. And I'll turn it back over to Brian and uh, be back a little bit later for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. We uh, appreciate uh, your presentation and being with us today. Uh, we'll hopefully have some good questions for you there at the end. Uh, next, uh, we have NJCA partner and E-Team sponsor, uh, Sean Connors and his team have joined us uh, today. E-Team sponsors the official fundraising partner of the NJCAA. 
And during their time as a partner, they've helped NJCA member colleges raise over $9 million. Uh, Sean may even have an updated number that may be outdated, but uh, each team sponsor has been a great supporter of the NJCA, including being the title sponsor of the 2018-19 NJCA football national championship games. And they will be the title sponsor for the 2020 football championship game. In addition to the 2021 Division I men's and women's basketball tournaments, they were the title sponsor for unfortunately the ones that were canceled uh, from this last winter as well. Uh, but Sean is the co-founder and CEO of E-Team Sponsor, and I will turn it over to him, Sean. And everybody can hear me okay? All right, great. Hear. All right, great. Hey, uh, appreciate everybody uh, allowing us to come on here today. Um, we'll make this the fastest five minutes in a partnership uh, presentation, so we'll move pretty quick. But uh, as Brian uh, said, I'm Sean Connors, co-founder and CEO. I'm joined today with the person in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen there, uh, Mr. Steve Jacoby. Steve uh, is one of my co-founders. He was 17 years at St. Mary's College out in Moraga, California. Uh, worked as an associate athletic director in multiple capacities there uh, and uh, has been leading up our VP of partnerships here this past year amongst serving in other capacities here at the, at the company. Really for the next five minutes, all we wanted to do today was kind of hit take Everything slowed down in the world, um, and we figured today would be maybe an opportunity for us to share not necessarily what we do, because I feel like many of you do know exactly what E-Team Sponsor does or have a, the concept down. Uh, today, we really wanted to share with you why we're more than a fundraiser. So um, I guess we'll go ahead and, and rip through that real quick. Uh, number one, uh, my background is as a coach. Um, uh, coaching, uh, Art of War, Sun Tzu, was a book that I, I read uh, when I first got into coaching. And uh, one of the quotes that I felt was applicable at this time now is, in the midst of chaos, there's also opportunity. And I think right now, uh, there's a, a lot of um, uncertainty going on in the world. I, I think that's been, uh, that's been well stated. Uh, but I think there's an opportunity for all of us to find, uh, uh, you know, an, an opportunity for individuals like ourselves, but also for the athletic departments uh, that we work with. So. Um, Brian, if you guys are controlling, I'll let you guys just, there we go, perfect. Uh, so we're going to focus on the opportunities uh, that we can control. What we figured we'd do today is share with you a little bit about what E-Team Sponsor has been doing, what we've been focused on, um, and really how that's in the best support of you, our clients, uh, our partners. So uh, real quick uh, background on us, really, why are we here? What is E-Team Sponsor partnering with the NJCA for? Two quick things. Number one, our vision. Uh, where do we want to go? We want to be the most supportive and trusted fundraising choice, period. That's what we're working on. This reset, this downtime for our company has given us an opportunity to um, uh, really take a step back and stay focused on our vision. Number two, our mission. Our mission is really simple. We want to empower athletics. We want to unlock opportunity through the easiest fundraiser ever. That's our mission. That's our why. All of us are former student athletes and coaches. And really, that's what we're here to do. We're here to support your athletic departments. We want to create opportunity uh, for your student athletes, for your coaches. Um, and we need to do that with the easiest fundraising platform possible. So uh, next slide, we'll rip through. Um, uh, this gets into uh, there's a couple of transitions here. Really, our, our core values. Most important thing here uh, as the, uh, the, the next transition comes up, we have core values just like you do as an athletic department. And I think what's important here is probably a number of these are very similar to the types of core values that you have in your athletic department. Again, we come from that background. Um, so for us, uh, some of these you'll see on display right now. Uh, we have been telling our team that these core values should inspire action, especially now. Uh, we have not sent out an email solicitation or a fundraising ask since March the 13th. It's been over a month. Um, and as we transition to the action that we're taking as a company next here in this next slide, we'll talk about how these core values are playing a part in the kind of conversations that we're having with you guys now. Um, we've been doing a lot of listening. Uh, we have, uh, we have a, a saying here that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, you know, God blessed you with two, ear two ears and one mouth. So uh, we've been trying to do a lot of professional development. We tried to listen to the, the true leaders that are out there, uh, downloading podcasts, listening to uh, uh, peers like Brian, take people through best practices in certain industries. So we've, we keep hearing though that there's a leadership opportunity right now. And so something that we wanted to share with you, something that we've gained from all the different people that we've listened to from uh, uh, the last handful of weeks, we feel leadership is a verb. Leadership is something that you do. Um, leadership is all about influence. All of you have a tremendous amount of influence and there's opportunity here now to lead 
uh, maybe in a different capacity. There's an opportunity for you to influence uh, beyond maybe the way that you've done it in the past. Number two, we feel like verb leadership is, is being inclusive. Um, there, uh, Brian just touched on it in terms of being inclusive of other people that maybe you didn't focus or have time to um, uh, spend time with in the past in terms of maybe it's alumni, um, it's engaging uh, former student athletes, members of your community. Uh, so being inclusive, that's taking action. Uh, and then number three, verb leadership for us, we felt like it doesn't wait. Verb leadership takes action. And I think that's the takeaway for, for us in this leadership opportunity that we as a partner have you as an athletic director and leading the athletic departments on your respective institutions. We feel our takeaway is um, lead to win, take action. And uh, you're obviously doing that here today. So we commend you for being here. There's 100 and I think I saw 140 or so athletic directors that are taking action today. You're, you're taking a leadership opportunity. So we commend you for doing that. Um, next slide. Um, really how, when I coached football for a long time, I would ask my student athletes, how are you gonna respond when adversity hits? How will you respond to adversity? So uh, we've been asking our, our company the same thing. I mean, our, our company, uh, our employees, are tasked with supporting you as athletic directors, you, your coaches, um, and uh, the donors that are, that are supporting your campuses. Um, right now, our team's responded great. Uh, so the next transition, we'll go through a couple of them here. We've really focused on what we can control. Uh, at how many of your coaches or you as athletic directors have, have said that with your, in your respective departments. Number one that you see on your screen there is we've uh, really ramped up our budget cuts and leadership through adversity podcast. Um, the uh, transition you see on the right-hand side, that cell phone. Uh, we've had our, our, uh, our employees, our e-teamers, reach out to you, to your coaches. Just check in personally. Hey, you know, relationships and value are core values here at e-team sponsor. The relationship and checking in, making sure people are healthy and safe. Uh, the next transition, um, we've, uh, we've decided to, uh, for the month of April, anybody that wants to launch a campaign with us for the first time, they've never worked with e-team sponsor, uh, we're going to let them know we're with you 100%. So you're going to keep 100%. So uh, programs that are launching for the first time with E-Team Sponsor, they're going to keep 100% of the funds that they raise. Um, and uh, for schools that have worked with us, uh, they can launch a giving day or uh, an athletic department campaign. And their first $10,000 that they raise uh, is going to be 100% um, going back to them as well. So our next transition, as you, as you see on the phone on the right-hand side, You've seen that we've given away a free fundraiser. So we're trying to do our part to be a, uh, be a part of the solution, uh, try to give back. Uh, we'll get to a little bit more about that in a second. A couple things that we've also done in our next couple transitions here. Um, we've started a, a live streaming component. So our development team is working really hard uh, to work with partners like Presta to be able to not only just um, uh, provide a fundraising and a streaming vehicle, but be able to combine efforts there and be able to stream fundraising events where we can bring now instead of just people who otherwise couldn't come to your local community event which many of them happen here in the spring we're gonna we're gonna open up the world to you we're gonna open it up so that people uh, as we're in these shelter in place uh, requirements people are still going to be able to support your programs because we know that the financial need of your athletic department and your institutions is still there so we're going to do our part we can focus on what we can control and that provide you a platform to do that Last couple things here, we'll go to the next transition. Uh, we're we're uh, really going into what can we respond, or we can control how we respond to all the adversity that's going on. And the, the first two transitions that we have, we talked to our team about positive thinking and poise. So lead with positivity, lead with poise, we're gonna be in good shape. So you know how we've responded. We're meeting literally every single day. Uh, mental health is really important right now. Our company is full of extroverts. <laughs> so being locked inside of their homes is kind of tough right now. Um, so we've created, we're using Zoom just like uh, many of you in your athletic departments are with your staffs and your student athletes. We're just looking at this literally one day at a time. Focus on daily tasks, accomplishments towards daily and weekly goals. That's really important for us. Number two, we're putting people over profit. E-team sponsors revenue. There's no revenue coming in the door for us. And that's not for me to say, uh, uh, it's not for me saying that to create a pity party uh, by any means. We're letting you guys know we're practicing what we preach. Um, we're putting people over profit right now. We're going to make sure people are good. There's things that we can do to help them. We want to be able to do that. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the E-Team sponsor is looking to turn a profit from it. So for us, it's empathy. It's putting ourselves in our client's shoes. 
And we've instructed our team, lead with integrity, do what's right, uh, choose courage over comfort, and, 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 and also lead with empathy. Uh, and then the last thing there is communication's key. Many of you have probably, if you're our clients, you've already heard from us, you've heard from our team. Um, and I think that really herein lies the opportunity for us to build enduring trust with all of you. Um, and, and what we've uh, uh, really kind of the rallying cry around, uh, you know, E-Team sponsor of the last 30 days has been, hey, the strength and endurance of a company does not come from products or services, but how well their people pull together. And I think that's very similar to your athletic departments, the strength and endurance of your athletic department and being able to persevere through this adversity. Um, it really comes down to how well can your people pull together and leadership is a big part of that. So last couple things here, we'll wrap up. Um, uh, really just a reminder, we've raised $75 million for schools across the country with 18 partnerships now. Um, the NJCAA being, you know, near and dear to us. This is uh, by far, uh, you know, I think our longest standing relationship uh, beyond the one we have here in California. So really appreciate uh, all of you that are partners. A couple last uh, transitions here for you. Uh, to rip through. Um, number one, uh, as Brian mentioned, uh, we've actually gone over $10 million raised. Uh, quick quote there from uh, Dr. Parker saying that, hey, one of the best moves you guys can make is to partner with us. And we appreciate Chris uh, sharing that. Um, and, and we certainly stand behind that. Um, as Brian mentioned as well, these next couple transitions are really, hey, the more we, the more money that E-Team sponsor is able to raise for your institutions, the more money that's going to be going to E-Team sponsor, that means it gives us the opportunity to reinvest into your partnership, so uh, into this partnership. So uh, being able to come on board and support basketball and baseball and these uh, national championships is something we want to continue to do. Uh, a couple numbers for you as we exit. Uh, six years we've been a partner. We have 269 of you that are partners, so thank you. We appreciate that, and we look forward to growing that number. Um, the average we've raised per student athlete in NJCA is $312. And uh, uh, we've uh, strength of our system is we're getting 90% of the donations plus are coming from outside your local community. I think the most important thing here is we're averaging $40,000 per athletic department. So, you know, if you're uh, if you're on the if you're on this uh, uh, meeting here today and you're not working with us, we would say, hey, great. If there's an opportunity to add $40,000 to your athletic department's budget next year, um, we'd love to have that conversation with you and talk to you about exactly how that works. Last slide here and we'll uh, get you guys the information. Really, our focus is gonna be at the very bottom of this pyramid where it says donor acquisition programs. We understand your foundation and your campus is really gonna be working just like we are now. Relationships, those planned gifts, major gifts and donors, they're focused on that. Um, we want them to continue to focus on that. We will help create a funnel of new donors to your athletic departments. And that's really where we call it our follow one course until successful. That's our focus, okay? Um, and then the last, I think the last slide I'm coming up here. Yep, we can go one more after this. Uh, we can rip through this one here, Brian. Um, I think the last one we have is, yes, the pricing model. So last one here, just real quickly, a reminder, we have a revenue share product, no financial commitment up front. That's our team funder prop. The one on the right, Fundraker. This is where the majority of colleges and universities are going now. You pay a software license fee up front. 100% of the donations go to your school every single day. So you have a much higher return on your investment. Um, and, uh, and we have a renewal fee that's tied into that. Quickly, if you get a pen uh, or your calculator, take this equation, write it down. $312 is what we're averaging per student athlete in the NJCAA. Multiply that by the number of student athletes that you have in your athletic department. That's how much money you could realistically add to your athletic department next year. So um, I think the last slide is just our, our contact information. So be able to see that there. Uh, give us a follow on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. We've got a YouTube channel with all of our podcasts. Uh, for those of you that have Apple, Apple products, uh, you can follow us on uh, Apple and, uh, and download our podcast there or listen to us on Spotify. So appreciate everybody giving us the time. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for all of you. And uh, again, lead to win, take action. All right, Sean, thank you very much. We appreciate you guys joining us today. And again, your uh, partnership with the NJCA and your support for our association. Thank you. Uh, one question did come through of will the slides be emailed? Yes, we can email. Um, what we'll probably do is we'll take the slides and we'll put them on the landing pages for the webinar series. This is also being recorded. 
and will be um, put on the website as well uh, for people to be able to see. Um, so that was one question that came through one to answer. Um, our next uh, presenter will be um, uh, Joe Stepanik with Huddle. Um, the Huddle is the official video breakdown and analytics provider of the NJCAA. Um, as a newer partner, um, Huddle has definitely jumped in in a big way and including that's uh, providing the NJCA complimentary film exchange services for some of our NJCA championships. And uh, a lot of people know Huddle as a company, but they continue to be an innovator in new technology in the sport industry. And we're excited to have them as a partner and to work with our colleges. So Joe, I'll uh, turn it over to you now. Awesome, thanks a lot, Brian, appreciate it. Um, first of all, guys, uh, thanks to the NJCA for giving us a chance to speak. Um, as Brian mentioned, I'm Joe Stepanek. I'm the college sales manager here at Huddle. Um, I've been at Huddle for about six years. I've been working with uh, college coaches and ADs and commissioners for about the last two and a half years. Um, what I'm going to talk about a little bit, uh, just from what we've been hearing from, from athletic directors, from coaches, how, what they've been actually doing uh, to adapt to the COVID-19 situation. Um, really, as, as the COVID-19 situation's unraveled over the last month, a lot of the frustrations we've heard from athletic directors and coaches we've spoken with um, is really about having to adapt to the situation that's out of your control entirely. Uh, none of us have the answers to questions like, you know, will sports come back in the fall? Will crowds be able to gather in place? Um, it can be easy to get caught up in the what if game. Um, while honestly, the answer to these questions are out of our control, um, successful programs, what we found, are going to be focusing on improving and fortifying the aspects of their programs that they can control. Um, so here are just a few ways uh, that uh, we're helping programs to adapt to address the situation. Um, many schools right now, they're missing out on vital funding from camps uh, that not only bring money in the door for you guys, but also prospective athletes. Uh, coaches aren't able to get out, the, get out on the road to see athletes, or they can't even get athletes onto campus to evaluate them in person. Um, with this, recruiters, they're having to get extremely creative um, by asking athletes to film themselves doing drills they'd otherwise, you know, done for them in person, like the 40-yard dash, height, weight, strength, speed, uh, measuring their reach, and so forth. Uh, the recruiters, what they'll do is they'll then ask these athletes to upload that video um, and then send them, send them that video for, for evaluation, either through Huddle or another platform. Um, looking past the cancellation of spring sports, as a lot of us have kind of talked about already and have experienced, uh, spring workouts are actually being impacted as well for fall sports. Uh, coaches can't be with athletes to run drills, get conditioned, or to even work on early team bonding, as we all know, um, really does drive success in team chemistry when we get into the playing season. Uh, coaches are having to think outside the box um, to still prepare as though the fall season is going to be coming. Uh, fortunately, uh, Huddle is built to facilitate re remote staff to staff and staff to athlete communication. Um, we've already seen coaches shifting to uploading drills and workouts to Huddle and are sharing these with their teams to then host conference calls with their athletes to do screen shares and walk athletes through video sessions just as though they were in the film room. Very similar to what we're doing right now. The, the last thing that we've actually seen ADs doing um, is taking the time to, to evaluate their facilities and their equipment, really kind of investing um, in that infrastructure uh, at, their, at their institution. Uh, many of you are, are likely aware Huddle released our own camera for the gym um, about two years ago. Last year, we really rolled it out. It's our Huddle Focus camera. Uh, but we built, this, we built this from the ground up based on what coaches are looking for. Uh, a camera with built-in um, artificial intelligence technology uh, that's smart enough to follow the ball or stay fixed on position in your gym. The camera, it also makes coaches' lives a heck of a lot easier um, by automatically uploading that video to their account. Um, so your programs can use it to create and share highlights and game recaps. Uh, in the unlikely event, as I mentioned before, we don't, you know, we don't know the answers to what, what's going to happen this fall with restrictions. So in that unlikely event that the COVID situation extends into the fall or winter with more parameters on crowd size, having an AI powered camera reduces that dependency on having to staff camera operators in your gym and then also giving the camera has the ability to live stream. So you can broadcast to fans who weren't otherwise able to make it to the, to the game. Um, just in ending here, uh, and I wanna give Jacob a lot of time to speak here, but I wanna thank the NJCA for allowing me to come chat with all of you. Uh, Cloud-based communication and e-learning has been our expertise over the last decade. It's something it's ingrained into our heart and we truly love. 
Um, but we do, we'd love to chat with all of you about how we can help your program prepare for the fall. The email address that you do see on here, if you just email into that, wanting to chat with somebody about, you know, potential possibilities of what you could do with your program, uh, it will go to the sales rep for your school and we can get in touch with you. That email address is also going to send you, or I'm sorry, the uh, website, that's going to send you to a link to um, our athletic department packages that a lot of schools are taking advantage of right now to help them get through a lot of the stuff and prepare for this coming fall. So, Brian, turn it right back over to you. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate that and uh, definitely appreciate you being with us today and everything that Huddle's doing. Thank you. All right. Last but certainly not least, uh, we have uh, Jake Ripple with us, uh, Athletic Director at Dodge City Community College. Uh, Jake became the AD there in July of 2017 and has an uh, experience of 20 years of collegiate coaching and athletic administration experience uh, with him. And 12 of those years in, are in uh, Kansas Jayhawk Community College Conference at various institutions there. And during his time as an athletic director, uh, he's grown and added programs in addition to overseeing success on the field and on the court. Um, when he was the AD at Northeast Community College, the volleyball program there, qualified for the national tournament for the first time in 40 years. Uh, and that's just one of the many successes that he's had as an AD. And uh, he actually began his athletics career as a women's basketball coach, uh, which he was for 14 years. Uh, so, Jake, we appreciate you being with us today, and I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Brian. I, I appreciate it. Um, obviously, I want to uh, kind of start by saying thanks to, uh, you know, the sponsors, to Sean with with the team sponsors and Joe with Huddle. I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, supporting our, our our organization and taking the time to jump on today. Um, so that was one of the big things that I, I wanted to make sure I thank you. Uh, thank you guys for and, uh, you know, we'll just kind of jump into uh, what kind of what we're doing here and and just some ideas that we're throwing out and I think the biggest thing as we look at this is is uh, you know we all have people we talk to or or uh, some kind of uh, manual we go back to for ideas and and different things and we're all dealing with this for the first time and uh, so it's one of those things that I say you know throw the playbook out the window there's there's nobody that uh, um, you guys as as athletic administrators, all of us as athletic administrators, there's nobody that has more experience dealing with this than than yourself. And and so I think that uh, we have to understand that that uh, we're going to make decisions. We're going to do things that uh, are going to be right. And we're going to do things that that may not be right. And uh, you've got to understand that we're all dealing with this for the first time. But with that being said, I think one of the things that that has really come along for me um, has been that, uh, you know, listen to everybody around you. There's a lot of people with a lot of ideas. And, and I would say, um, you know, my, my assistant athletic director, Nathan Laramire's had some great ideas that we've talked about uh, through this. Some of our coaches have had great ideas. And so that's one of the things that, um, that I definitely think that uh, we look at uh, going through. Um, so, I, I think in talking about that, understand that everybody is there and, and it's definitely not a, not a time to be closed minded, not a time for us to shut off ideas. To give you an idea of, of Dodge City Community College, just some of the background, um, we're located in Southwest Kansas in a, in a community of about uh, 25,000 people. Um, our community is a very, uh, very heavy Hispanic population. We have two uh, large meat packing plants here in Dodge City, and um, we're pretty isolated when you, when you think about the rest of the world. We're a fairly isolated place, but um, it's it's had its own challenges through this uh, through this. When when this all started, uh, we were actually heading to spring break before our uh, athletic administration decided to uh, make the move to go completely online. So our student athletes and, and our students in general were off campus when that decision was made. And it's been tough because some of them didn't even come back. Um, some of them decided when we made this decision to uh, stay in place. And we've had to um, do things a little bit differently. Um, but I think one of the things that I, I really enjoy about Dodge City and the college is the fact that we've kept the, the student 
the student in mind and, and very forward with that um, as we've done it. And like we've had a number of students uh, that were living in the residence halls and um, we've continued to uh, work with them to actually pack up their rooms and ship things to them. Our student life and uh, residence life people have done a great job in that and we've tried to help some with athletics and then we're also finding places to store stuff for student athletes that are coming back uh, onto campus next year. Um, Community wise, we, like I said, we're, we've been fairly isolated and, and not seen a whole lot of the COVID-19 activity until the last week here. And it is currently really ripping through our community. Um, like I said, we're a, a county as a whole, we're probably, um, we're looking at just over 30,000 people. And we've gone from one case a week ago to uh, the latest update today, uh, I believe from the KDHE was 51 cases today. Um, so we've really seen an increase here. Um, our institution, in addition to what we've done for the student athletes, one of the other things that we've done is we have a dorm uh, that was one of our residence halls that was not in use, and we've actually turned it into a quarantine location. Um, we did have to quarantine a couple of uh, students when they came back off of spring break. They had been to hot spots in the world, and um, but we were also using it now as a quarantine spot for some of our first responders um, around Dodge City. You know, if they've become exposed in some way, um, we're actually using that to um, try to protect them and, and their families. So that's one of the things that we've done. Um, but moving on to really what we're doing as an athletic department, I think the first thing that uh, the first thing I really want to talk about is our communication with our student athletes. Um, I talked to our coaches and they've done a they've done a great job as as uh, as was talked about earlier, you know, being the coaches are the front line of what we're doing. Um, you know, we're on a daily basis. Nathan and I are trying to stay in touch with our coaches, trying to give them as much information as possible, but they're the front line of what we're trying to do. And so um, I have to give them a ton of credit for uh, for what they're doing. Um, so we've got talk to the about the communication with the students and uh, if you'll roll that back one slide the the first thing that uh, the first thing that that really talked about is is make it regular and make it intentional and I have to give our football staff a lot of credit with this they jumped on this pretty much immediately um, and they have a very structured schedule to how they're doing things um, Every Sunday and Monday, each position coach is meeting individually by video conference with, um, with their student athletes that are within their position. Those meetings are all about academics and any other support that they might need. Um, then they're moving forward and they are meeting as a position group on Wednesdays. Um, every Wednesday, a position group has a scheduled time they meet. Our head coach tries to jump on as many of those as they can, but the position coach is the one that's uh, that's leading that. And then every Friday, um, they meet as an entire team. And so I, I think that's just an example of what I say about be very, be they're very good about making it regular. They know when they're going to meet. Their student athletes know when they're going to meet. Um, and the communication piece is, is great from their side. We've also taken some different avenues to that communication. Um, we've been, we've really tried to ramp up and it's, it's, it's one way communication, which I'm not always a huge fan of obviously, but we've got to find ways to get information out to our student athletes besides a, an email and, and they can't always uh, meet and have a Zoom meeting all the time. So we've got to find other ways to get uh, information out to our student athletes. So, um, We've taken the approach with our social media to really push information out there. Um, I try to make sure that I have a video for every Friday that we push out on our student, uh, on our social media as just updates for our students. Um, every Monday, Nathan uh, Wehrmeyer, my assistant, uh, puts together a uh, kind of a motivational uh, video for the week. And then the latest thing that we've started um, 
and it's kind of a combination of information as well as uh, hopefully some entertainment pieces is uh, we're starting to do some uh, some Zoom video calls and kind of turn them into a podcast that we can put out on YouTube for people. And, and I really appreciate, um, we did our first one uh, yesterday and uh, Dr. Parker actually jumped on with us and we talked for about 30 minutes about what's going on and, and as well as uh, had some fun with it as well. So um, that, was a, that was a lot of fun to have him on. And we're going to continue to do that with, uh, with our own coaching staff and, and with other athletic directors around the country uh, for a very similar purpose as, as what this is. We want, uh, we want to hear different ideas and we want our students to hear different ideas of how things are going. Um, and then we're, we're also making a point for our students to use our other resources that are on campus. Um, you know, our counseling uh, area has been very good. We have two, we have one full-time uh, counselor and one time, one uh, part-time counselor, and they've really done a good job of reaching out to students. They've served as a very good liaison between um, our students and our faculty. And then we also have our uh, Student Academic Resource Center and they have really ramped up their online tutoring. Um, we have, we use a program Upswing that has automatic online tutoring, but our, um, we have a, a number of uh, tutors that are also jumping on video calls and doing tutoring with our student athletes, uh, no matter where they are through the video calls. So we're relying, you know, while we're trying to do a lot uh, from our department, we're also relying on other areas of campus to really jump in and and help with with some of those uh, some of those avenues for what we're doing, and they've been wonderful too. So um, you know this is a this is a definitely a team effort, and uh, we're getting the entire campus involved. So um, that's one of the things that's been good. Um, I guess moving forward to kind of communication with our staff, um, we are. Um, our coaches need to have information and we've we've made that very clear i send out emails frequently but a lot of times they need to ask questions and so um, we've made it a point to make sure that we're meeting with our coaches on a pretty regular basis because they need to know what we know okay the things that we've been told from you know from our president from our vice presidents and how we're moving forward as an institution our coaches need to know that too and we think that that's a the very important part of, of what we're doing. Um, right now, we meet uh, every other week with our entire staff, and that's assistants, everybody, and then um, by Zoom meeting, and then we meet the other weeks, we meet with head coaches only with the idea that they can pass some stuff down. Um, sometimes when you get those, uh, Get those Zoom meetings that are too big. It just uh, it's kind of chaos, and so we want to make sure that we keep it orderly and we can keep it as where the information is getting across in a manner that's uh, productive and not just uh, it's not chaos in the meeting. So we do try to meet with the entire staff every other week, and then the weeks between we meet with our head coaches just to have a smaller group. And then we're also scheduling times uh, for Nathan and I to meet with each individual staff as well to talk about what their needs are and, and what their what concerns they might have with their student athletes, with their season, uh, those types of things. Um, so we're doing, uh, we're really trying to do that. Um, I think just like probably everybody here, I've spent more time on Zoom in the last three weeks than I had my entire life before this. And, and that's kind of saying something because we use Zoom uh, for um, national, for football poll calls, we use Zoom for our region meetings. So we've used it quite a bit, but it's just the amount has, has, has really taken off here in the last uh, um, here in the last couple of weeks and, and what we're doing with it. So um, I think that that's important to meet. Um, the other piece that I, that I, the reason I like to meet with the big group is I want our staff to understand that everybody's still supporting each other with this situation as well. Um, it's a chance for them to get together and, and just chat and, and do some of those things. Um, 
you know, and, and to assure them that, you know, we're all going through this. It's not, it's not just, you know, and I, I guess not assure they know that, but to remind them that, you know, we're all going through this at the same time and we're all going through it together. And it's uh, um, definitely a different, um, different thing than we've been through before. But, but as, as we're working through it, understand that we've all, you know, that we're all working through it together. Um, forward to our, our other big piece. And this is, this is a piece that's concerned me for uh, a while now, and that's dealing with our boosters and supporters. Um, obviously, and, and uh, Sean hit on this a little bit when he was talking about their, their platform. It's, a, it's not a good time to ask for money right now. You know, we have some people in our community that are diehard supporters and, and they're with us 100%. And, um, but it's not a great time to ask money. And we're coming up on the time of year that we usually really get out and work for, uh, you know, our, our advertising for the next year and our, and our booster club for the next year. We're really working into that time here in the next uh, here in the next month to month and a half. And, and we're really worried about that, but, um, we've made a point to say, you know, keep this in mind that, that this needs to be about friend raising right now too. Um, you know, they need, we need friends all the time. We need support as from the community, but right now there are a lot of businesses out there in our community, especially in a community of our size. And, and I think this stands nationwide. There are a lot of business out there that need our support as well. And um, so that's one of the things that uh, as much as I don't uh, want to get out much right now, especially the way it's spreading in our community here in the last uh, week, but um, I do make a point to get out and uh, you know, work with the businesses that have, uh, supported us through the years. You know, we have uh, restaurants and and some of those places that have been wonderful to us. And and so I am trying to get out there and support them as well and, and do some of those things because we think that that's very, very important as we go through this time. And the other piece is stay in touch. Um, that's part of our social media piece that we're trying to get messages out there that obviously are headed towards our student athletes, but they're also headed towards our boosters. You know, we've done... Uh, We've done some different things uh, similar to what Brian talked about in the, in the, um, you know, picking up things with our social media. We've done some coaches spotlights and uh, kind of get to know them beyond the court, uh, things like that. Um, and that's been a, a popular thing with our, with our boosters. I've heard from a few of them that have said, Hey, you know, it's really nice to kind of get a deeper look into some of our coaches. We know them as coaches all the time, but knowing them as a person sometimes uh, is very, very beneficial for us as well. So that's been a, that's been a, a real positive in, in some of the things that we've done, but I've also tried to reach out uh, whether it be by email, by letter, by phone to a lot of our boosters and just, you know, just to check in on them, not, not to ask for anything, um, just to check in on them and honestly ask them if they, if there's anything that we can do for them right now. Um, and it's not easy when you don't have, uh, you know, your student athlete population on campus, but it's one of the things to, to really look at. And so that's, that's an effort that we've been trying to make and, and trying to just stay in touch and, and be good partners with them as we work through uh, this difficult time. Um, kind of uh, moving to wrapping up a little bit of what we talked about and, and some of the, some of the things that, that uh, I've kind of learned through this one, the fact that, uh, you know, we're all very busy uh, in the athletic world, athletic administration, we spend a ton of time with our jobs. And, and so that's one of the things that's been pretty neat to see. Um, I've seen it with a lot of different, uh, different people have fun, you know, have fun with your family have fun with what you're doing. Um, you know, I've seen some great uh, social media videos from NJCA athletic directors. Uh, if you guys don't follow him, uh, Brett Monahan has been at Indian Hills has been wonderful. He and his uh, family do a, a lip sync uh, in the car um, multiple times a week. And, and so he's, he's one that's, that's been a great one to follow of, of having fun with it. And, uh, 
you know, and then Mike Landers at, at uh, Navarro really did a great job. I don't know how he talked his wife into putting on a, a Navarro cheer uniform, but he did. Um, and he's done some uh, video pieces as well. And, and I know he has another one coming out pretty soon, but have fun with it. And, uh, you know, we, that's what we have right now. Our families are the people we're around. So you've got to have fun with them, um, you know, and, and then unplug and this came from uh, my assistant Nathan actually he you know his Monday motivation this week was uh, was to um, was one that uh, he said you know you don't have to be on all the time um, that's one of the things that that uh, that's been great and he just you know he said that that and it kind of hit home with me when I watched his video he said you don't have to be on all the time um, and, uh, I think, so as you're, as you're looking at that, think about that and then, you know, pri prioritize your own health. You know, we're all trying to do things to help our student athletes, to help our supporters, to help our coaches. Um, you know, we have to keep our own health in mind as well as we're, as we're moving forward with it. I think we have to, uh, we have to keep that in mind. Uh, moving forward. So, you know, do prioritize your own health. It's important. You know, if, if you're not there, if you're not healthy, um, it's, it's hard for an athletic department to move forward. So definitely prioritize yourself and then just, you know, understand moving forward. You know, this is not going to be, this isn't our new normal, I guess would, would be the way to put it. It, we're going to be different when we come back. Um, Dr. Parker made that comment yesterday, said, you know, one of the things that he's noticed is people have been really kind to each other and, um, you know, moving, moving forward. I think that's, uh, that's been one of the things that kind of stuck with me from our conversation yesterday. He said, I hope that that's something that continues, uh, once we move past this and, and that it does become part of ours. We're, we're all very competitive people. There's a reason we're in athletics and, and a lot of us are pretty high strung and, and, uh, you know, moving forward, I, I think that uh, our normal is going to look a little bit different, but understand that, you know, we're still all in this together. We're still trying to, trying to get through together. And, and that's just kind of where we're headed. So um, I'll kind of wrap up there. I know I've probably used up my time and, and then some, but uh, I don't want to, I know we've, we've been on here for a while, so I don't want to take too much time, but um, I know Brian wanted to do some Q and A here at the end. So uh, we'll definitely stay on. And, and uh, if you guys have questions, ask away and, and I'll turn it back over to Brian Luckett. Uh, thank you, Jake. Uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, definitely a lot of good stuff there and you definitely stay within your a lot of time so uh, no problem there um, we do have a couple of questions that people have already submitted we'll have uh, we'll just do a few questions here for for time's sake but um, if you're on zoom at the bottom there's a button that says chat if you do have a question just hit that button um, and then type your uh, your question there and uh, it'll come to us and we'll be able to see it um, do have a question here this is uh, first for the um, athletic directors that we have um, but uh, the question is, what, me what measures are your regions taking? Uh, what are you guys seeing in your regions and being involved with, obviously, 24 across the country? Um, and we'll have two perspectives here from you guys. But, uh, you know, what are the measures regions have right now? You know, I would say our region was pretty proactive. Um, we, I think Brian talked about March 12th being a date that uh, he remembers. And I would say the same thing about March 11th for us. We were sitting at a softball game of uh, against Butler uh, Community College, and and uh, as we're sitting there, Nathan and I are getting emails from uh, from our region, from the national office about uh, about the way this is this is moving, and um, I think that's been one of the things. Our region directors are um, very good about staying in touch. Um, I would say that that uh, we talk um, we talk quite a bit. But our region was was very progressive. We actually had shut down um, our athletics prior to uh, the NJCA, or I shouldn't say shut down, suspended our athletics prior to the NJCA coming out and saying that that we were suspended. And then we were in those same discussions when the NJCA shut down the spring season. So I think uh, we've been pretty good about it, and our region athletic directors have been very good about. Um, 
talking to each other and bouncing ideas off of each other as well. I think the communication from our, from our, you know, the top down has been really good uh, and has, and has been helpful for all of us. One of the things that, uh, you know, we jumped on right away was to meet once a week by zoom. Um, you know, our leadership, Tammy Smith and Jack Sullivan and Troy Tucker, you know, put, put together uh, some zoom meetings and they've been really helpful. First off, just to get through that initial, um, you know, avalanche we were under. The information was coming so quickly and we had to kind of get out from under that. And uh, the, the, we've had those meetings now once a week. And e even in addition to that, you know, one of the things that I thought was important and, and good that everybody could do is some professional development stuff. This has been really good, uh, I think. And I learned from, from Jake and from all the presenters and I hope they're all gonna be great, but also in our region, uh, we're doing once a week or maybe even more some professional development stuff where we're having people come in to speak on our Zoom calls uh, from other regions. Uh, we're getting some four-year folks to come in. I think one of the things that, that all of us could probably do right now is build some extra connections with four-year level people. That's something I'm working on during this, uh, during this period, trying to reach out. We have some academic alignments with four-year colleges and I'm trying to make sure that we also have some athletic alignment with those colleges too and, and making some new connections with those four-year folks. So, so our region has done some really great things on the professional development side, uh, really been proactive and, and now this next phase is to do some planning. You know we didn't have any time to plan when this hit us so quickly but we're planning ahead for what a fall season might look like and that communication has been really good. We had a soccer conference call today and uh, starting to think about, you know, what happens if our region is further behind than others? What happens if other parts of the country maybe are further behind us in, in, uh, in things and, and trying to get some plans, a plan A, plan B, plan C for each of our sports, uh, fall, uh, winter might be a little bit easier. But to have that planning that we didn't have and weren't able to have uh, when this first hit us, we now do have time for that. So I think our region has been excellent. Uh, you know, if you can get a, a weekly meeting or bi-weekly meeting with your region ADs, uh, I think that, that could probably be really helpful and get that planning phase rolled out sooner, sooner rather than later. All right, thank you both for that. Uh, another question that came in for our ADs is, do you have an SID and or public relations personnel on campus and involved uh, in your efforts. Uh, so you guys talked a lot about social media and branding and those types of things. So um, that's a question that just came through. So, uh, you know, hey, Jake, go you want to go first on that? Okay, uh, we have uh, uh, and, and we have a part-time sports information person that helps us, and we have uh, another person in a full-time position that does a lot of our. Uh, video live streaming and some of our web and sports info. So we've, we've got some help in that area and that's part of the reason we're able to do some of the things we do. We also have uh, students involved. So uh, we have a, what we call a sports media club that helps with some things and, and they're doing a, a meeting tomorrow to put together a, a trivia night that's gonna happen with our student athletes. They're gonna be involved in the editing and putting together our winter sports dinner, putting those highlights in there for us. So we do have some help. Um, I think if you have a, a smaller situation, you've got to look at what you're capable of doing. You know, do the easy things. If you have good photos of your students, put them out there. Everybody likes that with a motivational quote. Uh, put out quick photos of your coaches. You know, you may not be able to jump into the video realm right away. But uh, keep your message out there, even if it's just uh, what's going on in your department, you know, links to the NJCAA, links to what your region is doing. Uh, even those type of things are positive. Uh, but yeah, we, we do have help in that area. And uh, we've worked on building that up over the last couple of years, too, to get uh, students involved. So from our side, um, actually, Nathan and I are uh, doing... 
um, most of it ourselves. We do not have an SID currently. Um, we've actually, uh, I'm lucky that I have a very supportive president. We've been in the middle of actually interviewing for an SID. And so that's been one of the things that we've been looking at and uh, continuing to try to move forward with that. But we have had some cooperation with our uh, marketing and public relations department. The first video we did um, was prior to our uh, governor uh, issuing a stay at home order. And so we still have people on campus. It wasn't fully staffed, but um, we actually did the first video, um, first update video from myself uh, was actually filmed in our in our studio on campus with our PR people and uh, and marketing people. So we've had some help. Um, they've been great about uh, meeting with us, Zoom meetings with us, just to bounce ideas and and give us some guidance on that as well. But uh, that's kind of where we've been on ours. All right, thank you both. Uh, quick question for our, our sponsors on here. Um, what kind of flexibility is there for colleges since we are experiencing the unknown as departments and colleges? Um, so, you know, I guess over the next few months, you know, what, what does it look like from you all in, in, in working with clients or um, NJCA colleges and really dealing with the unknown of what they would look like as colleges and presidents to athletic departments here in the next few months? Yeah. <clears throat> So we've so for us at Huddle, um, we've taken we've taken steps to um, we've taken steps to really push out any renewals that'll be due probably within the next little while to extend those out. You know, due to financial issues that people are having at this point. Quite honestly, we're if if you called into us and talked with us, we're going to work with you. We're going to be flexible. You know, you guys have problems too. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of the same stuff at Huddle. So. Um, what we, what we really want to highlight, honestly, is like our athletic department packages, like with, with coaches going to this remote learning um, to stay in touch with their athletes, to still get highlights created for everybody. We really want to get those tools in front of people, um, obviously at an affordable rate. And so with those athletic department packages, being able to couple everything together um, to consolidate invoices and to basically just get the best price, best value possible um, going back to the stuff I talked about earlier about, you know, investing in infrastructure, though, that if we run across issues, are we going to say there's a pandemic again? Probably not. But will it resurface? It could definitely. Um, so planning for the uncertainty is really just solidifying that that infrastructure at your school and making sure that the tools you have um, will allow you to kind of more smoothly work through these problems. So if yeah, if you got any more questions, I mean, for sure, reach out to us at any time. Yeah, I'd say uh, to piggyback off that, I think as we mentioned uh, earlier during our presentation, we've been talking about communication is key. So I think for us, um, we recognize the uncertainty of the future. Um, we understand that uh, from a, a financial standpoint, this is going to impact every school probably a little bit differently. Everyone has unique, um, uh, you know, setups within their athletic department, um, you know, financially from a budgetary standpoint. So. For us, it's just communication. Communication is going to be key because uh, we don't know how long this is going to go. Um, you know, we we are planning both operationally and financially that this is going to last for a while. That this is probably going to go through, uh, you know, the uh, at least through the fall and into the winter. Um, we're making um, adjustments and uh, changes to the way that we operate, but I think it all is going to come back to in order for everyone to be successful. We, we know that the schools are still have a financial need beyond. Uh, you know, what's, what we're all currently experiencing right now. Um, so we just want to be a part of those, uh, you know, those conversations. And so communication is going to be key uh, in that, in that happening. Yeah. And I'll actually, one more thing say, kind of going back to what uh, Brian Rowan said a little bit, just about uh, having that plan A, plan B and plan C, right? So having that idea that, you know, if everything goes this way, yeah, we want to move forward with it. So getting decisions done now and still having those conversations to be active with that um, and then to pivot later, uh, just so you can have contingency plans for things that, you know, are quite, you know, like we said, uncertain. So um, that's the only thing else I'd add is just having more plans is what, we, what we've been hearing from athletic directors is them actively thinking about that. All right, thank you both for that. Uh, this will be our last question. Uh, Mike Sadler had a really good question here, and this is for the whole group. So we'll go uh, Jake, Brian, Joe, and then Sean. 
Um, but uh, for the whole group, we work in an industry that we are constantly out interacting with people. How do you deal with the sudden lack of true social interaction that being stuck in your house has caused? Um, so again, great question there. And uh, we'll start with uh, Jake. Yeah, I'll take this one first because I can uh, give you firsthand knowledge of how Mike Sadler is actually dealing with it. Um, <laughs> this morning, uh, Mike called me and uh, um, Mike called me. He's like, hey, do you have a minute? I said, sure. He goes, I just need to vent right now. And it was so funny because I was like, you know, you don't have that. You know, you're not there with somebody in the office. You don't have that person there where you can just, you know, I think we all on campus and, and Sean and you guys in your businesses, you have that person that you can go to that to vent. It's, it's not, uh, you're not griping about anybody. You're not, it's not that it's just, you need to vent. And, uh, when Mike called me this morning, I, I think we ended up talking for about half an hour and, and, uh, laughed about some things and, and I completely got it. But, uh, for me, that's one of the things that that's been very important in all of it all of this is staying in touch with uh, colleagues that that I consider good friends in the business and and uh, you know I I would say with our region and I talked about our region directors we talk a lot and so obviously Mike um, as well as Shane Larson and Tony Tompkins and then uh, Mike Landers and Scott Schumacher down in in region 14 I talk to those guys a lot and uh, you know we just bounce ideas and and things that we're all going through so that's been one of the big helps for me uh, talking to having people that I can just get on the phone and call and talk to um, and and uh, but it's still you know it never takes the place of that personal interaction I don't think but that's that's been one of the helps for me Brian? Yeah, I'm, I'm smiling thinking about it and, and hearing that answer. Uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's an enormous change to what we're used to when you sit in the office and there might be an afternoon or a morning when there's just people in and out all day. Uh, and that's, that's been a, just a huge change to what we're, what we're used to. I think, like I said, uh, about some things about our region, to even have that once or twice a week Zoom, it's the best thing, uh, best thing we have at the moment you know uh in my neighborhood I happen for me and and maybe it's not the same for everybody I happen to live in a golf course development and the golf course has become Central Park for us so we see our neighbors much more often and we're much more in tune with what's going on in the neighborhood uh, which is an interesting thing you know we're doing the drive-by birthday parties for kids that our kids are friends with uh, anything along those lines we've, we've tried to do, uh, but also just, you know, it's been, it's been a ton of phone calls and uh, I like um, something Sean mentioned earlier, you know, was empathy. I think we have to uh, really during this time, you know, be open to people. People are dealing with this in such a different way from each other. You know, I, I'm, I'm up and down. Sometimes you ask me today, I feel great, feel positive. We'll get back at it. Uh, by tomorrow could be could be headed the other direction and think geez what are we going to do when we can't get started in the fall uh, you know I think we show that empathy show it for the student athletes I've had some great talks with them and really positive stuff some with our coaches and uh, hey it, it, not to say it hasn't been difficult but uh, you know you try and make the best of it and I think the, the, the zoom for, for whatever it's you know whatever its value is is, is skyrocketing for us to be able to visualize something is, is much better than a phone call, but a phone call is better than, than nothing at all. So, you know, in a lot of ways, communication and, and some of that phone calls and talking to people further away has been easier and better uh, during this time, you know, uh, but you miss out, you do miss on that on-campus piece when you could just walk to somebody's office and, uh, and vent or tell a story or get something done, even just like that by uh, taking a walk across campus. I think they stay positive with it and uh, try different things too. All right, Joe. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna. I won't reiterate uh, what they said because I think that's bang on. Um, just with you know with communication, but I, I I will add on just by saying, getting creative with what you're actually doing. So thinking about what you did on a like think about what you did on a day to day basis, um, and bringing that to the virtual world, right? So whether or not I was doing, 
you know, happy hours with all eight of my sales reps on the call, um, having them submit like baby pictures and doing a guest game, two truths and a lie, just really cheesy stuff like that, that really helped uh, just kind of bring the team together because our team, we really rely on camaraderie, um, very similar to an athletic team. So for us, that really helped us out in staying connected. Um, but like, like they all said, just being available to everybody, having my Zoom up all day and having somebody just drop in like, like I would if they were to walk into an office and come find me. Um, they could just click on that link and I was right there for them if they needed it, whether it was running reports or if it was just a talk about an idea, about a sales pitch. Because quite honestly, for our sales team, we'd be in your guys' office right now as well, uh, having social interaction. And we can't do that right now. So getting creative with webinars like the NJCA is doing, um, the NAI is doing something uh, with virtual business meetings as well. So um, trying to take what normal life looked like and making it virtual, um, I would say is probably about my advice there. All right, thank you. And Sean? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, the great points by all. Um, I would say I'll, I'll get into maybe some of the, the, the chemical aspect of it or the biological aspects. I mean, there are so, social hormones in your body, um, oxytocin and serotonin, and that's a real thing. Uh, you, you don't have the opportunity, like, like it's been well stated here today, you don't have the opportunity to go walk up and down your offices and talk to the colleagues and your peers and um, you know, Joe and our, t our staff don't have the opportunity to go in and sit down and talk with you guys as well. So I think um, you know, creating these opportunities for yourself to socially bond, whether it's personally, professionally, or both, um, that's going to continue to help you build trust, relationships, friendships, um, and it's going to suppress kind of the selfishness, the, 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 the cortisol and the dopamine and the things that really can create, uh, especially for a lot of extroverts, uh, it, it can create some issues. Uh, so from a mental health standpoint, that's what we're talking to our team about often. Um, and uh, also I think teams, you know, we're all part of an athletic department. Um, you have coaches and teams, student athletes. They're used to having that type of uh, inclusion and some great resources, obviously from Jake and from Brian today. Uh, Joe talked about it from the, from the business side, how they're doing things at Huddle. Um, I think it's great that, you know, when, when, when people have the opportunity to witness uh, or reinforce kind of these relationships, uh, people having positive things happening, um, the sense of pride. I, I, I lit up when Brian was talking about his student athletes, uh, you know, uh, creating something for an event or having their, uh, their quotes, their testimonials about what it's been like being a student athlete there. Um, you know, that, that's going to, that's going to reduce stress. That's going to, you know, help them uh, be more positive. It's going to, you know, solidify relationships. It's going to ease stress. So I think all of those things, anything you can do to promote those two types of social hormones right now, and all of what we just talked about uh, is definitely a step in that direction. I think that's an area uh, that I'd add that I think people can really look at because biologically it's a real thing. All right. Well, well, thank you all again. Uh, we'll look to end it there. Again, thank you to each of you for joining today and for our uh, presenters and being able to share and collaborate with everybody. Um, another quick reminder, um, our next webinar series will be April 30th. Again, we'll have next week off because of all the NJCA sport committee meetings, um, but April 30th at three o'clock Eastern time, same as today. And that session will be staying on track, maintaining academic and eligibility requirements. Um, that'll also include some of the compliance staff uh, from the NJCA national office um, that'll share some things with us. So again, thank you to everybody for joining. Thank you again to our presenters um, and we'll continue to move forward strong, focused and together. Thank you all. Have a good one.